Greetings, and welcome to my YouTube channel. We're going to talk and discuss and, uh, well, first I'll play for you the G minor mazurka opus 24, number one, and we'll chat about it. I love this mazurka. I love all of Chopin's 58 mazurkas. Depending what edition you consult, the generally accepted number is 58 mazurkas. In some editions, there are more. I want to say a few words about this piece because it contains so many of the basic elements of what contains a mazurka. First of all, this is a slower piece. The marking is lento. It's a kuyavyak. There are three kinds of Mazurka styles. Kuyavyak, which is slower, Mazur, which is medium speed, like Opus 7, number 1, and Obereg, which is a more faster, thumping, lively uh, type Mazurka, like Opus 7, number 5. Now, the term here is lento. Lento, of course, means slow. I want to say that we do know from letters that survived uh, by Chopin's uh, students that lento was a general indication that that not necessarily mean slow as a dictionary slow. Let's keep in mind that this is a mazurka. Yes, mazurkas are dances in triple time, not to be danced, nothing Chopin wrote was to be danced as such. But they are dances, and of course Chopin changed everything in, in the crucible of his inventiveness, whether it was ballad, scherzo, polonaise, nocturne, and mazurkas. They became something special in his hands. He was a master of these uh, genre. And so it is the case with uh, mazurkas, of course. You know, each mazurka, you, you should look at it as a gem, as a diamond, a pearl. They were terribly important to Chopin. Why would he compose 58? of these wondrous concert pieces. He composed mazurkas from the beginning of his life to the end. 
of his life. So we just want to talk a little bit now. I want to just show a few things about this piece. First of all, when you look at a mazurka, or any piece of music, obviously, you want to look at the score, study it like a detective. Where are the clues? Where are the accents? Where's, where are the rubato or rubato possibilities? What about the rhythms? Very important in, in mazurkas. So let's look at, first of all, I, oh, I want to say a word about accents, first of all. Uh, accents can fall on any beat. First beat, second beat, or third beat, none of them, or all of them. A little interesting example. Look at opus uh, six, number two, in C sharp minor, bars five and six. You will see there's an accent mark over each beat, interestingly. And there can be other mazurkas where you don't see an accent for, for lines and lines. Uh, they might be uh, implied, OK? It's something that you can feel if you feel like going to the third beat or going for the second or the first beat, that's something you can consider. Always record yourself. OK. Now, in the very first bar, this A is held, yes? That's your mazurka. Yam, pa, pam. What do we have here? We have an eighth note followed by a 16th rest, 16th note, and then the long note, which in this case is a quarter note, yes? So, you will see what I just did there. I lifted my hand. You want to be sure to let the mazurka rhythm breathe. Yes? Give it the, let it be elegant about it. Yes? As elegant as one can be. It's also important to understand the balance of the hands. Your singer is your right hand. The bass note here, the bass notes and this, are your anchors. That's less, okay? See what I did here? I play this, then I bring my hand over to where I have to go next. I'm going to be playing this chord. But once I bring my hand here over, and I finish playing two, three beats, right, I have all the time to get back to the bass. That's an important um, aspect to to have the balance, the tonal balance, where the right hand leads, your right hand is the singer, the bass notes are important, but the chords are less. This piece was composed 1834, 1835. Chopin was already well established in his new home in, in Paris, yes? Well, how did that come about? He left Poland at about 20 to seek greater career opportunities in other European capitals. He spent two years in Vienna, and then he settled in Paris, the center of all cultural things. But there were other things going on as a result of his so-called exile. His health was not good. He had a tubercular condition, for which there was no cure at the time. And there was also political unrest in his native Poland, which uh, precluded him from being able to go back. So he poured his heart out, his, I want to say more than his heart, his soul. His soul is in the mazurkas. OK, let's continue looking at this. We're in bar 17 now. I call it the triplet section because they're triplets. You will notice there's a slight accent, speaking of accents, on the G of the triplet. Good way I learned long ago to get a triplet even is to put a little extra weight on the first note. You don't have to do it every time. I don't either. But this is just an idea. 
finish playing that. Okay, what did I do? This is a ninth. Just gonna point out a few things. You can take this with your fifth finger, you can let it go play with your fifth finger, or with your fourth finger. For years I did it with my fourth finger. As of late, I'm doing it with my fifth finger, and then three, four, three, one, three, three, four, three. And if you look at bar 20, this rolled chord I take with the right hand, with my thumb. You can roll it, it's there. Oh, that's quite a that's quite a stretch. I played on a on a Broadwood piano, 1830s Broadwood piano in London. Uh, was in a museum and they allowed me to, to try it. And I was really, really excited because this was around the time that Broadwood and other uh, piano manufacturers were building pianos for, for Frederick Chopin. And it was a beautiful, brawny, nice piano. But I did notice that the keys were slightly less, had slightly less of a width. Might have also been the age of the piano, but never mind. It's still it, it, this big, beautiful piano here. Chopin has some stretches in a lot of his. Uh, uh, literature and it's fully acceptable to break up a chord or roll a chord. For example, right there, sometimes I will break that up, I will do that. We are coming to a repeat, back to the top of the page. You notice what I did, I played it differently than I did a minute ago. I feel that when we have a repeat, and this theme appears several times in two pages, you might want to change it. comes in here to lengthen or shorten a note or a phrase. Playing it differently a little bit. Flat, we went from G minor to E flat, and at the top of that page it says con anima. Well, let's be anima. Chopin reserves the right to change styles in mazurkas, and he does it all the time. We started out in a cuyaviac, now we are in a mazur, in the happy key of E flat, and we are having a whirling mazur again. It's not for dancing, but for for the hands on the keys, right? Okay. If you look at bars 38 and 39, you will find something absolutely amazing, and you will thank Chopin for this. He shows you two mazurka rhythm possibilities. Bar 38, dotted eighth, sixteenth, followed by the long note, which is a quarter, and then in the very next bar, with the rest. They're both mazurka, are they? With the 16th rest, 16th note. Now, a good way to practice this, uh, for, for many years, uh, this is oct actually an octave, obviously, your fourth finger is right over the F. Why not use it? Well, there is another fingering possibility. Five, five. Now for this you have to lift your hand a little bit, right there. Five, five. Different ways to practice this is uh, 
you know, doubling up on the notes, ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum that kind of thing, and so forth. Um, it may feel more um, with a fifth finger to this fourth and the second might feel a little more secure. It depends on the balance of your hand. To some people, it may not matter. Both fingerings are possible. Uh, Back, we're coming back to the phrase, to the original, to the original melody. I like to bring out these bass notes, just me. Let me play it and see how you like it. Clean pedal, shallow pedal on a beautiful piano like this. You don't need to put pedal all the way down. Shallow pedal, right? Um, so once again. Playing it differently. What did I do there? I gave it a little, a little jab. I gave that mazurka rhythm a little jab. For me, mazurkas are not little chocolates, petit fools. They're wondrous concert pieces, each one of them, which Chopin created and gave to us and to the world. And they deserve the full dynamic range and imagination of anything that we would play, whether it's polonaise, ballad, scherzo, waltz, anything. Under a flower is earth, dirt, dirt, earth. That earth can be anything you want it to be anywhere, in any country. You can personalize it for yourself, and you should. For Chopin, it was the Polish earth, and that was the flame that burned within. OK, let's look at the end. It's very important how we begin a piece and how we end a piece. You know, you can also start this piece in a very solemn way. Or if you've played some quieter pieces and you feel the spirit feels, you can also get into it. In my opinion, both are acceptable. And how you end a piece is similarly important. Now, you can end it faster, perfectly acceptable. Let's try this. does say ritenuto, I like to bring it to a thoughtful and quiet ending. We want to be a little careful. You don't want to take too much time here and here and here and here because then it becomes sort of flusig, uh, watery. You want to keep a mazurka together. You want to keep a mazurka pretty much in, in the framework of what the composer gave us. Remember, Chopin was a classicist to the extent that he admired Bach and Mozart, and yet he was the quintessential romanticist. He gives us all sorts of opportunities, right? Now, if you will notice what I did on this roll chord, 
I started on the A and the bar before. I want to hear that. In fact, I'll even break the pedal up. This is such a rich chord. Sometimes I'll even break the pedal up between the D and the B flat that I get the B flat by itself. Yet I have the, the, the G and the D in there. I performed in Poland some years ago, and it reminds me of the, the term żal in Polish. There's no exact translation, Z-A-L. It means smiling through tears. Uh, to me, smiling is the operative term because it, these mazurkas are evocative. As they were for Chopin, he was thinking about his homeland. You can think about anything that is personal to you. It's not a sad thing, it's a happy thing, actually. And this is how, in the case of Chopin and his mazurkas, of course, he created the Polishness, yes, that we hear in his music. The time I played in Poland some years ago, uh, there, there, there was a, the, the sun was setting, and there was this elderly lady who was lifting baskets of apples. There were apple trees all over the place, and the whole the smell was amazing. We opened windows. We were driving through this section of Poland. And I thought, my goodness gracious, this is absolutely. And I saw this lady, elderly lady with a babushka, and she picked up and put it on a, on a trolley, on a cart. I think of this scene whenever I play this mazurka, interestingly. As Chopin would say in his own language, bardzo serdecznie dziękuję. Thank you very much. See you again. Cheers. <laughs>